But well, we say good day to you at this moment of your time. We are the Bating Council and we thank you for allowing this transition to take place. With the gift and our blessing to be able to cooperate with you in this way. So we ask in which way will you be of service to you this moment of your time. Can I ask, how did this planet form? Was it a gas cloud and it, how did it actually form to start with? When supernovas erupt, they bring about all sorts of different chemicals and compounds and gases that eventually can solidify in the right set and circumstances. And then those solidifying compounds start to find a new sun to gravitate around and stabilize and eventually crystallize into a form. Something comes to my mind. You've said before that everything is conscious. So is, is this matter conscious when it decides to find a new sun? And yes. It's hard for us to imagine that. Yes, there is a consciousness behind these sorts of events. There's a solar consciousness, the supernova consciousness, and the consciousness that goes into the formation of the planet. This consciousness, however, in those dimensions is not a self-aware consciousness, but it is nonetheless consciousness that has a quality to it that is conscious. So, um, was it dust or gas or plasma? What was the what was the substance that formed into planet Earth? A combination of all of them. And did other planets form at the same time? Some planets did. Some planets that ended up in entirely different solar systems. The supernova projects these conglomerations of energy outward and they move very fast and go in different directions. And as they crystallize over time, they are caught in the gravitational pull of the star. Okay, and was it hot or cold when it when it formed? Extremely hot. And eventually it cooled down. However, of course, at the core, it is still extremely hot. Let's talk about the core. The core is still hot from those original days. Correct. And what is the core? Some say it's iron. Is it iron or is it something else? It is iron. And it is molten at the very core. There was a theory that when a meteor can hit the, the planet, the outer crust can spin into a new orientation. So what is now Antarctica was once perhaps on the equator or something. Yes. Did that happen when there were humans on the planet who were making maps and things? No. Ah. So there is a mystery that there is a map. But humanoid-like species, yes. Humanoid-like species. What, what name would I call these humanoid-like species? Hyperborean. They had technology and civilization and language. Yes. So this is before Atlantean and Lemurian that you've spoken about. Correct. Hyperborean. And they were... Did they look very much like us? No. Good Lord, what did they look like? They were very tall being. You might consider them having an elven sort of appearance. They had a range of skin tones, much like humans, from darker to lighter skins to fairly bluish. They had degrees of advanced technology, including things like hovercraft and other sorts of things that they used to have a rather technological civilization, all of which was completely destroyed and obliterated. Golly, well, this is all all new. It's a, it's a bit of a digression, but it's it's too fascinating. I don't remember you talking about this at all before. Have, have you spoken of this before? Not really. So how was it obliterated? Was it a, a nuclear war or something? Or a, a natural event? 
it was an intergalactic war that brought about the destruction of this species. Good Lord. Are there any archaeological remains or fossil remains? No. Nothing. Later in your future, vague footprints, you could say, may be discovered in Antarctica. It won't be like the structures you see, but it will be very peculiar, an echo of something that is like an etching in the fossil record that cannot be fully identified. Okay, well, I want to bring the topic back to the origins of Earth. Can you tell me about the magnetic field? What is it? How did it start? All planets of this nature have a magnetic field that is generated by the movement of seismic activity beneath the Earth's surface. And so the spin of different layers of the Earth and the crystalline core of the Earth emit a charge that goes to the outer poles and create this electromagnetic vortex around your planet. Okay. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, well, if it's magnetic, surely we could get electricity from this somehow. Yes, that would be possible. But would it be profitable? That is what your main concern is on your world. Not as in the concern of the everyday person, but the concern of those making these sorts of decisions. And so there are many things that are possible that they know are possible, but are not shared with you. Okay. Um, I want to ask about the moon. It I, I've heard that the scientists say it's older than the Earth. Is that the case? No. But was it made at the same, same time, or did it arrive later? Not much later. There's a lot of anomalies with the moon, even to the point there's a book, Who Built the Moon? Can you comment on the strange qualities of the moon, that it's, it's much bigger than we would expect, for example, that it only faces one way? not long after the Earth came into its orbit with the Sun, there was another planetary body that was headed in the direction of the Earth. These planetary bodies collided, and the Moon became what resulted from this collision. So therefore the Moon is part of the Earth and part of another planetary body. The moon was modified. It was modified so that it would be perfectly the size to create the exact eclipsing effect, as this was believed to have spiritual significance by the visiting extraterrestrial beings at that time. The moon has been a place for extraterrestrial bases for thousands of years. And while no one lives on the moon, it is very frequently visited and occupied by these visitors. Right, this is a lot to, to take in, but let's start with who were the extraterrestrials who modified the moon? Who, who were they? It would be the Anunnaki. They're the ones who you've said created the humans, and they also modified the moon. That's all for this podcast, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. DanteStarshine.com is my website, and you can also find me at Dante Starshine on YouTube. Have a brilliant and blessed day. On a spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you both hear us coming through a whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok.
us we hide me as we try to disembark here And look at Kenobi as we whisper in the dark Thank <laughs> you. 